Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we will learn how to carry out a hypothesis test for the difference of means to sample t-test. Chicken farming is a multi-billion dollar industry, and any methods that increase the growth rate of young chicks can reduce consumer costs while increasing company profits, possibly by millions of dollars. An experiment was conducted to measure and compare the effectiveness of various feed supplements on the growth rate of chickens. Newly hatched chicks were randomly allocated into six groups, and each group was given a different feed supplement. A. Describe the distributions of weights of chickens that were fed linseed and horse bean. So we're going to concentrate just on these two. And when we describe the distributions, we always want to do so with respect to center, spread, and shape in context. So we can say that the median weight of those fed linseed is higher or greater than those fed horse bean. Also, the, those fed linseed have a greater spread, or IQR. We can see that this box here, from Q1 to Q3, is wider than this one. Also, both weight distributions are approximately symmetric. Okay, so now part B. Do these data provide strong evidence that the average weights of chickens that were fed linseed and horse bean are different? Use a 5% significance level. So again, we're just going to concentrate on these two, and we're going to compare these two groups to each other. And we're looking at averages, so this is going to be a two-sample t-test. We can set up our hypotheses. The null hypothesis always says that everything's the same. There's no difference. So the true mean for horse bean is the, is the same as the true mean for linseed. So mu sub h is equal to mu sub L, or equivalently, mu sub H minus mu sub L equals zero. That is to say there's no difference, whereas H sub A says there is a difference in these averages. Um, we're going to do a two-sided test because the statement of the question doesn't imply that we had a hypothesis that one was going to be greater than the other. We just want to know, is there a difference? H sub A says there is a difference. And we can set our significance level alpha to 0.05. Conditions for the two-sample t-test, we need two independent random samples or two randomly allocated treatments. We also need that both sample sizes are at least 30 or both populations approximately normal. The first condition is definitely met. We have two randomly allocated treatments. It was stated at the beginning of the problem that these treatments were randomly allocated. Now, the second condition is harder to verify. We look to see if it's reasonable. Um, since both sample sizes are small, we're looking to see if it's reasonable that the populations are approximately normal. So since we can't see the populations, we can only see the samples, we observe that the samples are symmetric. We can't say the samples are normal, that's too strong a statement. We can't see that from the box plot. But we can say that the samples are symmetric. So we will assume that the populations are approximately normal. So we say that, that that condition is reasonable. OK, so now let's find our t statistic. t equals the observed minus the null over the SE. Here we're talking about a difference. So we really have the observed difference minus the null difference. The observed difference is that difference in means given in the table. This average minus this average, that's the observed difference. The null difference is what's given by H sub O. The null difference is no difference, zero. And now the standard error is a little more complicated. To see the structure of the standard error, we can find a formula sheet. We're not assuming that the standard deviations are the same, so we won't use this. We'll just use this one here. That's our structure for the standard error for the difference of means. And so we'll plug in the standard deviation of the first one, h, and square that, divide by its corresponding n, and then plug in the standard deviation for the second one, square that, and divide by its corresponding n of 12. Okay, the two-sample t-test is one where the degrees of freedom are uh, complicated to calculate, so we're allowed to just use the calculator shortcut to identify the degrees of freedom. So I'll pull up a ti. And let's go to stat. So we'll turn it on and go to stat tests. And this is a two sample t test. So two sample t test number four. And hit enter. We don't have all the data. We have the summary stats. So we'll go over to stats and hit enter. 
x bar 1, the first one is 160.2, and the second one, or that s sub 1 is 38.63, okay, n1 is 10, and then similarly for the second one, we have an average of 218.75, a standard deviation of 52.24, and a sample size of 12. And so now our alternate hypothesis is a not equals to, so we choose that one. And we didn't pull, so we just leave that as no. We're not assuming the standard deviations are the same. And so calculate, and now we get our t statistic and our p value, as well as the degrees of freedom. So we can record those. We have a t of negative 3.02, a p value of 0 0.007, let's say and a degrees of freedom of 19.8. This p-value is less than alpha, so our conclusion is reject H sub O. We have evidence for H sub A. So there is evidence for H sub A. There is evidence that there is a difference in average weights of chickens that were fed linseed and horse bean. Okay, so Part C, what type of error might we have committed? Explain. Well, we have to know what our conclusion was. Our conclusion was that we rejected H sub O. So, because we rejected H sub O, we might have committed a type 1 error. Type 1 is reject H sub O when you shouldn't have. So, that's the type of error we might have committed. D, would your conclusion change if we used alpha equals 0.01? What was our conclusion? Our conclusion was reject H sub O because our p-value was less than the alpha of 0.05. Here we can say no, our conclusion would not change because our p-value is still less than 0.01. So we still reject H sub O. That's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.